Welcome back everybody. Thank you for watching another video. Tonight we're going to have a look at this premium OBD2 reader from Mukar. This is the 892BT. And as always guys, if at the ending of the video you want to purchase this awesome OBD2 reader from Mukar and help support the channel, Make sure you check out the link in the description below because we do get a commission if you purchase this item. And of course, before getting started, just want to thank the good folks out at Mukar for sending me this OBD2 scanner to review. Let's get started. This scanner comes with this nice soft case. And inside of it, all kind of goodies. Of course, you're going to have your user manual, Ethernet cable, charging cable that's a USB to USB-C, all kind of data connection options here. And you also get international charging adapters. Let's have a look around this guy. Super slick design, really thin bezel. This is an eight inch screen. There's a look at the thickness there. On the bottom, you have no ports. On the top, you got your power switch, a USB and then a USB-C port there. On the back of the scanner, we have a nice stand. I think every OBD2 scanner Shouldn't have a stand. It's incredibly useful in the garage. Also on the back, we have your OBD2 reader dongle that connects to this via Bluetooth. And it's held into place on the back by a magnet. Guys, the first two things I noticed is that when you turn this thing on, it's ready to work. You don't have to download anything onto your phone. You don't have to set up an account. All you got to do is connect this into your car's OBD2 port. This is going to connect via Bluetooth onto here. And you're pretty much set to go. I think another thing you guys are going to notice right away is that the touch responsiveness on the screen is incredible and the refresh rate is so fast. It's running a quad core processor with four gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of onboard memory. And all of that is extremely important when you're looking at things like live data, especially when you're graphing more than one metric at one time. You want to make sure that you're getting the most up to date information from your car's ECU. Now, of course, with this scanner, you're going to be able to do all your basic things like doing full scans, reading codes, erasing codes, live data, freeze frame data, all of that stuff you're going to be able to do with this. Now, this is also a bi-directional scanner. A lot of the newer vehicles and higher end vehicles support that type of functionality. And what you can do with that is like, let's say your window isn't rolling up or down. You can send signals to the relay or to the actuators and figure out which path is causing you the problems. So essentially, you can use this thing to get into your car's computer to do things like controlling your headlights, your oil pressure, your wheel speed sensor, your brakes, even how your mirrors fold in and out. And for you performance guys, you can even reflash your ECU to get the performance out of those chips. Now, having one of these is absolutely essential for getting car repair done on your own because you're going to plug this thing in and it's going to tell you exactly what's wrong with this. So you don't have to rely on somebody else to try to tell you what's wrong with it. But tonight, I want to show you guys how I would use this to buy a new used car. We're going to look at things like IM readiness, O2 sensor performance, short term and long term fuel trim. Here is what your home screen is going to look like. And I want to draw your attention to the upper right hand corner. See 90% battery life. It does have an internal battery, 4,150 milliamps. And then if you look a little bit more to the left, like right in the middle of the page, there's an upgrade link there. You don't have to pay for any upgrades ever. Lifetime free upgrades. A lot of other OBD2 scanners have you pay for a membership. Not here. So we're going to click on OBD2 right in the middle and hit enter and it's going to look for the correct protocol so we can get it going and normally it's the last one on the list and it's going to take us over to our main menu now if you look up to the right hand corner you can see my battery voltage is reported so the keys on engine is off that's why it's reading like that so when we start the car it should go up that's a good sign that your alternator is working now, if you count one, two, three, four down right here, right in is completed. I'm going to click on that, hit enter, and that's going to take us to this top option, I am readiness. You click on that. Now, what we're looking at is a list of the monitors that are reporting to your car's computer, and it's either going to say ready, not ready, or not supported. Now, if you go to look at a car and all of these monitors say not ready, 
that is a sign that the person that is trying to sell you the car has reset the computer either by yanking the battery or by using an OBD2 scanner like this. And it could be a sign that they're trying to hide something from you like a check engine light. Now, if you live in a state that has emissions and you're wondering what the inspectors are looking for when they plug your car in, number five is one catalyst monitor. Number 10 is another one, O2 sensor monitor, and then O2 sensor heater monitor. If any of these are not ready, that means they're gonna fail you and you gotta drive your car until you complete a drive cycle to get them to turn on. Next up, we're gonna check out oxygen sensor performance and fuel trim. But before messing with any of that, we gotta make sure that the car's computer is in a closed loop status, not open. And the way we do that is we go down to number six, fuel system one status. Click on that and it'll show us now because I haven't started the car that it is in open loop. Now, if we were to take a reading now, we would be getting readings from the computer's kind of preset programming, and we don't want that. We want the monitors to report to the computer what's going on. And to do that, we just got to start the car and warm it up. All right, I've had the car on for a while, and we can tell because if you look up here, you can see the battery voltage has gone up, and we are now in closed loop. Now we can take some readings. Let's have a look and see how my oxygen sensors are performing. Now I have a four cylinder car, so I only have one bank. Now sensor one is gonna be catching all of the exhaust. So it should be fluctuating up and down. The number should just be going up and down like this. Now sensor two is after the cat. It should be cleaning out all that gas. So it should stay pretty steady like it is right here. Now I am a visual learner. Watching those numbers go up and down really doesn't do anything for me. It doesn't tell me anything. So I'm gonna click on that graph button and now you can see how it fluctuates up and down. And really what you wanna do is hit this graph button here and then you can get them both side by side. But when you have multiple metrics like this, you really wanna to try to combine them so you really can see the relation. So again, sensor one is picking up all the voltage because all that exhaust is coming at it. And because sensor two is after the cat, it should be clean. That's why it's flat like that. So let's say the car you're looking at, sensor one is flat, it's not fluctuating. Well, that could mean that you gotta replace that O2 sensor and those can be expensive. But more expensive than that, what if sensor number two is fluctuating? That could mean that the catalytic converter is not cleaning out that gas and that's why it's picking up all the exhaust and fluctuating up and down. And catalytic converters, really expensive. Now we're gonna do the same thing for fuel trim. And this is really important to look at when you're looking at used cars because it gives you some insight as to the healthiness of the engine. The car's computer is constantly adjusting the air fuel ratio mixture to make sure that it's running smoothly. So here, see that there's a standard range. So let's say that long-term fuel trim is like plus 50 or even negative 50. Something wrong with that vehicle. The long-term fuel trim should stay pretty even because it's an average of a bunch of short-term fuel trims over a set amount of time. Now the short-term fuel trim is gonna fluctuate up and down, crossing zero, hopefully even, right? Plus 10, negative 10, plus five, negative five. That way the long-term fuel trim is even. Now, even though I'm in range, this is telling me it's spending more time above zero than below it because it's plus 14. Now, if I was looking at a car and the fuel trim came back looking like this, I mean, eh, I guess it would depend on what the rest of the car looked like because this is a problem, but it's not a huge problem. Just remember, the lower the number on the long-term fuel trim, the better it's going to be. Once again, guys, this has been the 892 BT from Mucar. Incredibly big screen, responsive, quick, gives you all kind of different options for getting your car repair done. If you're looking for a premium OBD2 scanner to help you out, this could be a great option for you. Well, all right, guys, this is the ending of the video. Remember, if you want to purchase this awesome OBD2 scanner from Mucar, make sure to check out the link in the description below. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.